So this is the same dog now out with the prong collar. Same walk as before. Uh-uh. Let's go. It's a lot easier to walk her with this leash. The danger with the prong collar, though, is if she gets scared um, or if she reacts in some way, she will activate the prong collar. What do I mean? I mean, she will cause the prong collar to tighten if she lunges towards something or she goes away from something, so. Maggie, good. I'm always gonna make sure when I'm working with the prong collar that the dog is gonna take food from me when I say their name, especially in the initial phases of training, it's super important that we're creating engagement through the prong collar. Uh-uh, Maggie, good. I like to go back and forth between different training tools. So when I use the flat collar, that's indicating that I'm not really expecting very much of the dog. We're just going from point A to point B or we're doing what, our do what we're doing. And if they pull on the flat collar, it's not that big of a deal. It's okay. I'm going to essentially allow them to pull on the flat collar, which is just this normal, your normal standard collar. Okay. The prong collar or the training collars, I'm going to have to be a lot more precise and a lot more clear about those tools so that we're using them consistently and the dog is being trained to respond to them appropriately. So you could see the leash has to be loose all the time when I'm walking with her using the prong collar. And it's only tight when I'm letting her know that she needs to do something different or to say, hey, keep doing what you were doing or to correct her. Uh-uh. Good girl. Now, although it's easier for me to take her out here with the prong collar instead of the slip lead, the slip lead will show me a little bit more how much of this is the dog really learning and how much of this is just because they're wearing a prong collar. So the slip lead, which is just like a rope that tightens around their neck, I am going to use to communicate leash pressure to the dog. I'm going to use to communicate their commands, but I'm going to understand that in certain environments that are highly distracted, distracted, I might not find that the slip lead is the best training tool to use. I might find I need the prong collar. Good girl, baby. So you can see she's enjoying her walk. Good girl, baby. Now keep in mind, we purposefully chose to walk here where there's no dogs reacting on the other side of the fences. There aren't any really distracting or scary things happening here. It's a pretty calm road. And because it's next to this busy road, it's extremely rare that we're gonna have a dog run up to us off leash or really anything come charging up to us off leash, which could startle her which we do not want to have happen on the prong collar. Good girl, huh, Bean? I'm just going to stop here and touch base with her, see if she's checking in with me. She is. Good job. Good. We always say excellence is mastery of the basics. I love the prong collar, and I am a fan of using it on young dogs sooner than later. But I also need to emphasize that it's important we only use the prong collar where we and the dog are both succeeding. And if we're getting to that point where we're just pulling on the prong collar and pulling on the prong collar and the dog's not responding appropriately, we need to stop using the prong collar or stop what we're doing and realize, hey, we're in over our head. It's too distracting. Good girl, huh? Yeah. This dog can be sensitive at times to pressure and she can get a little bit scared by the pressure on her neck. So we do want to be very careful with her that we don't take her in over her head. And with other dogs, it might be the opposite case that when they feel the pressure, 
on their neck, they become very excited and they begin to get activated from the pressure. And that's another dog we're going to be careful about. Hey, don't take them out over their head because they may start creating an improper association between the prong collar and they may start to think prong collar means get excited. Or in this case, she might think prong collar means get scared. Realize we spend a lot of time in my backyard or in my front yard and in parking lots and very common environments building engagement with the prong collar before we took her out on a walk. Uh uh. Good. This is not a heel. This is what I call let's go. When I say let's go, the dog does not have to be behind me, but they do need to stay on one side of me or behind me or in front of me. They can't be crossing over or wrapping around me with the leash. So they also need to keep the leash loose. So if they want to be in front of me, that's okay, but the leash has to be loose. And here you can see she's doing very good. Uh Uh-uh. So we're very proud of her. And we will turn around now and head back. Doing these short walks like this with her in a calm environment or a place where we know there's not going to be certain things that scare her is going to be crucial to helping her and enjoy success long term when it comes to walking on the leash. Come on, baby. Yes. Now we'll head back. Good girl, baby girl. Good girl, Maggie. Okay, break. Break. So when I say break, that's an indication that it's time for her to smell, investigate, potty, whatever. Break. And in this case, I'm repeating it. Let's go so that she understands that she is on a break and it will take time for her to figure out oh that's the time to smell when he says let's go we don't smell Uh uh-uh uh-uh maggie Okay, break, break. Good girl, good girl. What a good girl. It's really important that we give them a time to smell and we give them that freedom as well as the structure. If the walk is all structure and no smells, the dog will become frustrated and shut down. If the walk is all smells and no structure, the dog will become very rambunctious and very distracted. So typically I would say 75% of the walk should be structured and 25% should be us letting the dog smell. If we need to follow the dog around, that's okay, but the leash still needs to be loose. Okay, let's go. Uh Uh-uh. Come here, baby. I'm really impressed by the progress this dog has made. She's been with us for nine days, or eight days actually, and she's doing incredible. But it has been a lot of work, a lot of structure, and uh uh-uh, a lot of stopping when she gets over her head, or we become frustrated and just saying, hey look, this isn't working, let's just stop and let's try again later. Good girl, good job baby. Okay, I'll see you all in the future. Remember, we don't blame them. We train them.